Hey guys, in this video today, I'm gonna to show you how you can create a highly profitable freelance business that you can run from home or from the other side of the world or from your local coffee shop or wherever you have your computer. I'm gonna show you how to create this business completely from scratch. Now, this is something that I've done successfully for myself. I have a business where I get paid $100 an hour to create spreadsheets for people. And I never went to college for this. I, I don't have any fancy certifications, right? I'm basically uh, zero qualifications except for the things that I've taught myself. So wherever you are, whatever position you're in, whatever skills you happen to have or not have, this is something that you can do as well. Now, the one caveat to this is that it's gonna take some effort. So if you're one of those people that has an attention span of a goldfish and can't sit through a 10 minute video, then there's no way you're gonna possibly be able to be successful at this. So if that's you, then you might as well stop watching this video now and go do something else. But for everybody else, I'm gonna walk you through the whole step-by-step -step process that has worked for me and is still working for me because I'm still running this business model successfully every single day. Okay, so here's the full business model. Step one, have a skill. Step two, get attention. Step three, build interest. Step four, close the deal. So that's it, you can all go home now. Just kidding. I'm gonna tell you how to do each one of those steps. So first, uh, first step is to have a skill. If you wanna get clients, obviously you're gonna to have to be able to do something for someone that that person is willing to pay you for. Now, there are two basic criteria that I look for when evaluating whether or not a skill is going to work for this system. Number one is, is it specialized? Number two is, is it in demand? So when I say, is it specialized? I mean, is it something that a whole lot of people can do? Or is it something that's fairly unique, right? Because the more people that can do the skill that you're offering, uh, the less valuable it is. So if your skill is typing on a computer, like entering data, for example, you're not going to get paid very much for that because that's something that just about anybody can do. Whereas if your skill is performing open heart surgery, then you're gonna get paid a lot for that because there are very few people in the world who are capable of doing open heart surgery. So you wanna make sure that your skill is something that's somewhat specialized. And then the second criteria is whether or not it's in demand. So it could be that you have a really specialized skill, but if nobody wants it, then it doesn't really help you very much. So you might be one of the 1% the of people in the world that can put your foot behind your head, but that doesn't really help anybody, so nobody's gonna pay you for it. Even though it's specialized, it still needs to be in demand. So you need to find something that people want help with that uh, is something that not everybody can do. Now, you might have a skill like this already, and if so, then that's awesome, but you don't necessarily have to. So for example, my skill is that I build Excel spreadsheets. I'm very good at Excel and a lot of companies, a lot of business people use Excel and uh, don't use it so well or don't like it so much and would much rather hire somebody to do it for them rather than do it themselves. So it's something that a lot of people want and at the same time, it's something that there, there aren't that many people in the world that have a high level of skill in Excel. So it's, it's in demand and it's somewhat specialized. So that's why I can charge a high price for it. Now, if you don't already have a skill like this, that's okay. We live in the year 2020, or maybe you're watching this later, but it's only gonna get better. And, and we have access to basically unlimited information and we can teach ourselves anything that we could ever possibly want to learn. Me, personally, I have zero formal training or formal skill in Excel. Everything that I learned, I taught myself on the internet for free. I didn't go to college for it. I'm not Microsoft certified and nobody cares, right? They care that I'm able to do the job. So if you teach yourself how to do a particular skill, that's all the qualification that you need. And so whatever skill you choose, there are probably a whole bunch of free resources that you could use to learn that skill. So it might be that you wanna learn Excel because that's a good one and I'm operating kind of alone. Like there's not a lot of people that are, that are competing with me in this industry. And even the people who are good at Excel, most of them are working full-time jobs. They're not working as freelancers. So I basically have the whole freelance pie all to myself right now. And so it may be that or it may be something else. One good way to figure out what might be a good skill if you just have no idea where to start is to go through job listings on a place like ZipRecruiter and get an idea of what skills are getting the highest pay. Look for job listings where they actually tell you the salary. So if a C Sharp developer makes, makes $50 an hour, let's say, um, 
that's a, that's a pretty good rate of pay for a full-time job. Now, what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be figuring out what skills are involved in that full-time job that has, a whole, that has a high rate of pay, and you're gonna compete with that job as a freelancer, right? Because every company has a choice. Do I wanna hire an employee that's full-time, that I have to pay full-time hours, that I have to pay benefits, that's a giant pain if I wanna lay them off, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, or do I wanna hire a freelancer who can just do my project and then I'm done with him? So that's why it's great to be a freelancer, but you can get an idea of how much a skill is worth by how much it is paid in a full-time position. So if you look for a particular skill, get an idea of how much the full-time position pays compared to other skills, you can get an idea of which ones are in demand and which ones are specialized. So if I see a job for a C-sharp developer and that pays $50 an hour, and then I see another job for a, a Photoshop designer and that pays $20 an hour, well, I can kind of get the idea that the C-sharp skill is, is more valuable than the Photoshop skill. And that example I just pulled out of the air, by the way. So don't think that, like I'm saying, that those are the true values of those particular skills. I really have no idea. You have to go research it yourself a bit. And then once you pick your skill, there's a million resources online where you can learn it. You can just type in Google or type in YouTube uh, tutorial on whatever the, the program is or whatever the skill is. Uh, you can go to Coursera.org, you can go to Udemy.com, you can go to CodeAcademy.com if you want to learn a coding language. There are a whole bunch of resources online that are free or very cheap where you can learn just about any skill you might want to have. Okay, so first, first step is have a skill. Now you have your skill, we're going to go on to the second step, which is to get attention. Basically, you have a skill, you want to sell it to somebody, and so you have to convince somebody that your skill is worth buying. Now. Um, convincing that person I've divided, I've divided up into three steps, right? Get attention, build interest, close the deal. So get attention just means you have to stand out from all the noise. You have to get somebody to listen to you, right? Because you could have the greatest website in the world. You could have the greatest sales pitch in the world, but if nobody ever listens to it, then it doesn't do you any good. So the ways that you can get attention, there are tons of them to choose from. Right, and I'm gonna give you a whole bunch of ideas and don't feel like you have to try all of these, right? Just pick one or two. I mean, all it takes is one that works well and, and you're golden, right? You don't wanna spread your focus in too many directions anyway. So basically there are, uh, there are high tech ways to get attention and there are low tech ways to get attention. And by the way, uh, if you value your sanity, Please do not get on, on Freelancer or on Upwork, on Fiverr, sites like that. You're just going to drive yourself crazy. I mean, unless you're willing to work for like $5 an hour and compete with 40 people on every project, um, I really recommend that you avoid those freelance websites. So on the high-tech side, one thing you can do is digital advertising. There are a whole bunch of platforms that offer digital advertising that can be pretty well targeted towards the kind of person that you're looking to get the attention of which again, in this get attention, you want to get the attention of the person who is likely to be your client, right? You don't want to get the attention of a 12 year old that's, that's on the YouTube looking at cat videos, right? Chances are that's not going to be your target client. You want to make sure that your attention getting is targeted towards the places where the people that you actually want are hanging out. So for example, you could do a YouTube ad. Something that I do personally, is when somebody types in how to do X on Excel in YouTube, my ad comes up saying, hey, are you trying to figure out how to do something in Excel? Well, maybe you should just hire me to do it for you and save you a whole bunch of time, right? So YouTube ads are really good for that. You can do Facebook ads. You can, uh, you can do LinkedIn ads, which is cool because you can title, you can target people by their job title and by their industry and that kind of thing. Uh, you can do Reddit ads where you can target people by their interest groups. Or if you want to go super direct, then just use Google ads. So whenever somebody types in Excel consultant or whatever it is that you happen to provide in Google, then they'll get an ad with, with your uh, website saying that I do exactly what you're looking for. Another route you can take is search engine optimization. You put up a website and then you pay somebody or something you can learn yourself. Actually, this is probably a pretty decent skill if you want to be a freelancer. Learn how to make a website rank towards the top of the Google results or the search engine results. That way, everybody that's already typing in a certain keyword is going to get your website. Another way to get attention is through content marketing. So what content marketing is, is you 
create a piece of content. Now this might be, uh, generally this will be either a blog post or a video. And it's a video or a blog post that is targeted towards the interest of the person that you are interested in. So for example, if the person wants to know how to make a dashboard in Excel, I'll make a video about how to make a dashboard in Excel. And then at the end of my video, I'll say something like, uh, if you want me to create your dashboard for you so you can save a whole bunch of time and money and have a much happier life, blah, 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 then give me a call or, or click on the link to my website. Another great thing that you can do is to connect on social media. Facebook and LinkedIn are both very good for this. So on Facebook, for example, you can find a group of business owners, right? Almost every city has a group of business owners or a group of the Chamber of Commerce, and you can get involved in that group and just start conversations with people. Say, hey, I do this, I, I build spreadsheets. Is there any chance that you have a, a spreadsheet that you would like to be updated or you would like to quit wasting a whole bunch of time uh, manually entering this stuff when I could, I could create a macro that'll do it for you? So just have conversations like that, figuring out who needs your service on social media like Facebook and LinkedIn. And there's a lot of good strategies on the low tech side too. You know, you don't have to be fancy, you just do what works. One strategy that I tried that actually landed me one of my highest paying clients was to get yard signs created. So you know those, those signs that you stick in the ground that you see usually landscapers will, will put them on the side of the highway and that kind of thing? Those actually work, right? So I put uh, Excel help or Excel macros, something like that, big letters, a little bit of text about it, and my phone number underneath and uh, got clients that way. And I know that sounds kind of super ghetto, but it works and it's very cheap. Another great way to get clients is just to talk to people that you already know. So if you were doing this kind of thing for your old business, for example, just text your old boss saying something like, hey, I'm starting a new freelance business where I'm doing Excel or whatever you're doing and wanted to know if there's anything I could help you with. And then you can just text people and, and say, hey, I started this new business. Do you know anybody that might be interested in my services? Right, you could get a whole bunch of, of free leads that way just by reaching out to the people you know. Another thing you can do is you can actually go to events. You can go to networking events. You can go to business owner meetings, like chamber of commerce type of meetings, and meet people that way. Again, you're, you're putting yourself in the place where the people who are likely to want your service are congregating, whether online or offline. So that's step two, that's how to get attention. Now, if you're creative, you can probably find a whole bunch of other ways to get attention that I didn't list here. This is by no means an exhaustive list, but those, those will give you some ideas to get started. Now, once you've gotten your attention, you have to build interest, right? You've gotten the person to start listening to you. Well, you have to get them to a point where they're actually interested in what you have to offer. And there are basically three ways to build interest. Number one is through a website. Right, so you have a website that describes what you do, it describes how it can benefit your target prospect, and so it starts the thought in their mind that, oh, okay, maybe I should hire this person. Maybe this person could make my life a little easier. Another way you could do it is through a video, right? You have a video that explains your process, that explains what you can do, um, and that's a way to build interest. Another way you could do it is just through conversation. If you meet somebody and you start asking this person about his job or his business, uh, you can get to a point where you identify a need and you say, oh, I could help you with that need. I could build you your website. I could build you your Excel spreadsheet, right? And so you are building interest through your conversation with that person. And the main thing to remember here at this stage is what the, the first question that's on everybody's mind, and that is, What's in it for me? W-I-I-F-M, everybody's favorite radio station. What's in it for me? So if you can figure out what people value, what would make their lives easier, what problems they have that you could solve, um, that's, how you, that's how you build interest. If you're able to show how you could make their life easier in some way, or you show how you could make their life better in some way, that's how you generate interest. Now, whatever ways you're using to build interest, I would highly recommend that you have a website. So if you're running ads, obviously you have to run those ads to somewhere. If you're starting conversations on Facebook, it helps to have a website to, to point people to. Or even if you're talking to people in person and you hand out a business card, it's really good to have a website on your business card. Now the way that I like to do this is using a simple two-page opt-in funnel. It's super easy to set up. It's a two-page website 
and it works better than a regular complicated website because it, it focuses people on the one thing that you want them to do. So what that looks like is you have a, have a landing page, it's called, uh, where people can contact you or give their contact details. So on this one page, you say basically, uh, you call out what their problem is or what their interest is, and then you tell them about how your service can make their life better. So you say, for example, I say, are you tired of, of wasting countless hours trying to figure out how to, how to deal with your spreadsheets? Uh, you could call me and I'll do it for you and save you all this time and all this hassle and all this stress. Um, give me a call or put your name and email in this box and I'll reach out to you. And actually, I also asked for their phone number and I asked them to describe a little bit about the project they want help with. So once they hit the submit button, they go to page number two, which just says, thank you, we'll be in touch soon. And then I give my phone number again in case they want to call me. So this is like the simplest website in the world. You can build it in like two hours using a funnel building service like ClickFunnels, which if you're interested in ClickFunnels, click the link in the, the description below. I'll give you a 14 day free trial. And yes, I get paid a little bit if you sign up for them. So that would be awesome. I've used ClickFunnels for years. They make this super easy. Like you can have this website up and running in two hours and it works better than a traditional website that you pay a web developer a thousand bucks for. And the reason that it works so well is because it's so focused. You don't have a whole bunch of different pages. You just have one page with one action that the person can take, right? The action is to become your lead. And then, uh, you know, sometimes the people will talk to you on the phone, will call you on the phone. In that case, you just want to uh, close the deal, right? You've basically, you've already gotten their interest with the web page. All you have to do is close the deal. Or if they uh, submit the form, then you take a look at what they said about their project and then give them a call and then you close the deal. So super simple. And so once you've generated interest, then step number four is to close the deal. Now this stage, most of the time, it's gonna be talking on the phone, talking over a Zoom call, or actually having a meeting in person, talking to the person in person. So at this stage, um, in my particular business, what I do is I get really clear on what their exact project is. I ask them what, what they want, what's their problem, what they would like to have, you know, what they would like this project to be able to do. And then I tell them exactly how I would solve their problem. I tell them, okay, I would create a spreadsheet with a macro that does this, this, and this, in this order, um, blah, 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 blah. Does that make sense? And, you know, the person usually says yes, whether they understand it or not. And then I say, okay, good, I can definitely help you. My rate is $100 an hour. And I estimate that this project will take somewhere between eight to 10 hours of work time. And if the person has gotten this far in the process, most of the time they'll say yes. I mean, I have probably an 80% close rate, more or less. Most of the time, uh, once I give the price, it does not scare them away. They're, they're intent on doing it. They realize the benefit of it and they're willing to pay the cost. So that's the full system that's worked very well for me. I recognize this is kind of a high level summary. So if you like help implementing this system, if you like personal coaching where I can actually walk you through every part of the system, uh, then I do do that. So you can send me an email at chris at dominatethemarketplace.net if you want to inquire about that. Or if you are interested in starting an Excel business or a spreadsheet business, similar to the one that I run myself, I'm actually starting a, a training that's all about that, that's going to get into the details of exactly how to create an Excel business. And if you're wondering why I would create competition with myself, the answer is because that there is so much demand and uh, there is hardly anybody that's, that's going after it. So there's, I, I really don't have to worry about competition because there's so much more demand than supply, right? I'm really not gonna be competing with anybody. So if that's of interest to you, if you'd like to see all the nitty gritty details of how I built my Excel business and how you can repeat exactly the same process with exactly the, the sales scripts that I use, with exactly the uh, pages that I, the web pages that I use, with exactly the text that I use in my advertising, et cetera, et cetera. Like I'm gonna go into all the details so it's pretty much plug and play if you wanna have an Excel business. I'll put a link down in the description where you can sign up for that. This is something that is, is not really built out yet. This is something I'm, I'm kind of building from scratch. So I don't know, how to tell you exactly what's gonna be in it, but if you wanna have an Excel business, then this is gonna be pretty awesome for you.
And of course, if you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor, hit the thumbs up because it makes the YouTube algorithm like me better. Hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon beside the subscribe button so you're the first to get all my new content where I give you a whole bunch of cool ideas just like this that you can use to create businesses and find more freedom in your life. And if you think this would be helpful to somebody else, then go ahead and share it. Let me know if you got any comments, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if you enjoyed this video, uh, I think you'd also really like this one as well.